Hey guys, what's happening? So, I designed this uh, extruder system a few months ago, and um, I'd been kind of busy uh, doing like CNC conversions for my lathe and mill, um, so I had, didn't get a chance to really print it out, but I thought I'd go over it again, uh, because now I have printed it out, and I want to kind of go over what it is and what it does. So, my goal for this extruder system was to make it ultra, ultra light, um, based on a NEMA... Um, uh, NEMA 14 motor, the round kind right there with the two, two spots. And if you're looking at this, um, it might look familiar to you. Um, it's based on a BMG extruder, uh, dual drive extruder. But the goal here is this thing would be ultra light. And one of the most important features based on my original design, I created an extruder system similar to this with the back air feed system. That fed through the back. I'll show that. I'll show it to you, like uh, on my printer. But I wanted to replicate what I did before with the easy out. So if you get a jam or a clog in your extruder system, right, you can just take out these three screws right here, one, two, three, and you can pop this whole hot end out with three screws. This whole thing would just come out the, the front, and uh, you'd be able to get a jam out. Obviously, it's BL touch. Um, the air system is a what things a 30 millimeter blower fan on that side that's the part cooling fan um, right now I currently have a single scoop but uh, I'm gonna try this because I think a lot of people they overcool their um, you know the, their part cooling fan is too big and too elaborate I mean all you all you need to do is solidify the plastic you know and prevent stringiness so you're just trying to solidify the plastic but also sometimes when you overcool it you're cooling the part off you want to keep the part warm if you have a heated bed you want the heat to creep up and like keep the parts stuck so I mean there's a benefit I mean I could see it go either way but um, I, I really just think you know because I've, I've been printing for like many many years and I, what I just think you know these big elaborate cooling systems man they're just if you actually do get a jam it's a total nightmare to get apart I mean I've actually on some of these crazy ones I mean I've had to spend over an hour just to get the thing apart just to get to the jam you know try to unscrew the bolts off and but, uh, so yeah, if this doesn't cool off good enough, which I think it should be fine, I mean, um, what I might do is create a double duct, and I'll, I'll make, so it'll actually wrap around and be a mirror of this thing on the other side, so it will cool from both sides, but typically I think that's probably going to be enough, because it's aimed, it's directed right at where the part would be, right down here. So on this side, it's a 30mm uh, fan, so this is, a 30mm fan is what the, the V6 hot end originally came, came on. Um, this should probably work with a dragon too. Anything that's kind of like V6 based. Um, it was funny. Is I don't. I mean, I the V6 have always they've always worked really great for me. I've tried. I've actually I tried a mosquito. I mean, if you watch any of my other videos, I, I fix 3D printers um, for customers. It's not my primary job. It's sort of like a side hustle for me. But I mean, I fix anywhere from three to five 3D printers a week. So I pretty much have seen every kind of hot end. And I just think I don't know. I mean, I I, I mean the mosquito looks cool and everything, but I I don't. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't see a major benefit over like a V6 to spend the extra money. Um, there's the NEMA 14, and this is obviously for a linear rail. I might make like a Corrali, uh rail, something that would fit on a Corrali, like uh, the, the wheel design. But, you know, right now it's just for a linear rail. But, uh, and then the belt catch here. Um, and wire management here. So the wires, all the wires will be fed up through here and come out that way. Um, all right, so I've already printed out most of the pieces. I still got to print out this this little wire management. I had to make a change. My original design wasn't big enough. Um, BL touch. What else? All right, well let's go put it on the printer and see if see if the thing actually works. All right, guys, here it is. So I have it partially assembled right now. Just a 2.5 millimeter. So the ones that actually came with the thing actually work. So depending on the actual uh, NEMA uh, 14 motor you got, I also created this uh, adapter. Well, it's not an adapter, but it's just a link. It just basically increases the by 4 millimeters so the uh, things line up here, the, the gears line up better. So I'm just going to go like that. And take this apart so you guys can see it. So here's your, uh, so here are the insides. And this is a typical BMG extruder right here. So you can see the similarities of it. 
it just it's, it's scaled down to fit this NEMA 14 motor and I kind of skeletonized it a little bit just to make it lighter because the whole point is being light so like, like that same thing you know gear reduction my, my, my latch is different than the stock latch there's the stock latch Alright, so same thing. So if you buy a, one of those little cheap BMG extruders on Amazon, that'll give you all the parts to complete it. I think they're like $10 or $14 now. Pretty cheap. Um, Alright, here is the uh, base. Right here. This actually connects like that. And this connects with actually the belts. The belts wrap around here, and they're held in by these little belt latches right here. M3 screws. I mean, I have a complete list of what screws you need for this thing. And this was my, uh, the wire management. So, originally, this was the one I had created. Uh, I'll, I guess I'll probably upload them both on my Thingiverse page. But I think I had a, a bigger bundle of wires, so I had to kind of make it a little bit bigger. Um, and where are the fans? Anyway, so here are the fans. You can have one 30 millimeter fan over here, like that. And then 40 millimeter over here, blower fan. And then I actually have, right now I just have two different ducts. My, my original duct, um, you can see right here the hole. I feel like the hole wasn't big enough, the air hole right there. So I made it a little bit bigger. But I said like in the, in the video online that I might make the thing come around this way. So if I don't get enough air here, I can just, I'm having issues with stringing this or whatever. It's not solidifying. Then I'm going to create another duct that you know, blows on both sides. But like I said, I think a lot of people just overcool their, they over... The problem is when you create these big elaborate uh, extruder systems, right? You're actually adding weight, which is unnecessary. And that's you're trying to prevent weight. So let me show you my original design real fast. All right, so that's my original design, and you can see how it blows from the back. The fan, um, I mean, it, it ended up being pretty big, so I wanted to come up with even a smaller solution. But you can see the inspiration of I, I loved how this had the three hole design here, where I could pull out the front, but. Uh, yeah, but I wanted a much lighter, smaller package. So, um, all right, we'll give this a shot. See how it goes. Let me show one other, one other uh, printer. All right, so here is a Verone 2.4. I don't have good light in there, but this is the one. Well, it's a, it's a Verone 2.4 uh, commercial version of it. A company that sells a complete. It's a 100% comp complete printer. It's not a kit that you buy. But as you can see, I mean, this is I day. I probably actually I'm probably gonna make it a Verone mount for it too. Um, you know, with the double double belt latch, um, but yeah, you can see. Ideally, this is what you'd want—a super light extruder. Okay, another thing to mention too is I, I showed you that I had the spacer on this. So there's different these round NEMA 14. There's they come with different shaft lengths. Well, mine it wasn't that long, but back in the day, these things were kind of hard to get. And I don't even know if this is going to be powerful enough to to run this thing. So that's why you definitely want the gear reduction. You need at least a 4 to 1 or even higher, you know. Uh, but this is a tiny motor. It's even smaller than the one that comes like with the uh, the Orbiter. So, uh, you can tell the, the strength of it. It, it. It's the depth of the motor. How, how big the magnets are. And this is really tiny compared to like a... Here's a... This is a Pancake NEMA 17. But, yeah, the ones that come on the, the Orbiter, actually, there's more magnet, so it's, it's wider, it's longer this way. But I don't think I need to show you how to put it together. I mean, it's just really, I mean, self-explanatory. You know, four, four little M2 screws here. You know, obviously an M3 here. And then on the uh, linear rail, you know, it's just a couple M3. It just sits on the linear rail like that. It's going to be like that. The belt goes on the top of it. Right, here's a closer look at my original design. I'm still going to probably design some kind of LED thing. But the LED actually is nice because it allows you to help dial on the first layer when you have a light right there. You don't have to grab a flashlight. Um, yes, yeah, so I was going to maybe create something here in the mount, maybe. Um, but I'll be actually continuing uploading as I make improvements to this thing. Yeah, I was probably going to maybe add a piece maybe down here that held a LED strip. But this, this actually, the single one wasn't actually bright enough. So... Yeah, this is a uh, this for the BMG. We actually worked great. Melted it a couple times, but um, all right. All right. I guess I forgot for my last design because I think I'd originally copied it, but 
when I put this thing in there, I mean, it cracked this piece up like that. So, I'm about to redesign it. And, uh, nice and good though. It fits, uh, because it's kind of concave, I, I made the same mistake with this one. I had to redesign it. Uh, where it doesn't have a locking mechanism. Because there's not enough meat there to have a. I mean, I, I, I like the idea of having it locked in there, but. Um, so last night I decided to make a, a double duct. And uh, so just, it wouldn't blow very evenly. So it blows from one side like that. But the air duct back here, I need to make that bigger. That's not big enough to get enough airflow. So what I probably should do is. I mean, actually, I'm going to design different ducts. Experiment with the different ducts. But I need to probably make that hole a little bit smaller so it forces some of the air back through here. But I have to make this channel probably the same size as the duct works. So, well, that's a work in progress. But right now I think the single will work, so I'll try that. Um, all right, here's the good print. All right. Since the motor only mounts with two screws, I put an M3 screw back here to give it that third screw mount right there. I gotta get the right measurements though, or the right M3 screw here. Alright, so 30 millimeter fan on there. I gotta put the blower fan on there. So I gotta make sure, I, I mean, there's a couple different ways you can wrap the wire around. Um, I prefer, I mean, I could have it under here, but the problem is if you get under there, it's gonna be tight. And what happens if the fan goes out, the bearings will go out in the fan, then you'll have to take the whole extruder off. Whereas if I wrap it around underneath it, I can take the fan off without taking the whole thing off. Because it's going to be a nightmare. Well, it's not going to be a nightmare, but it's just you have to undo the belts and stuff. It's going to take extra time. All right, so you don't have to tap one of these in there, one of the PTF E tube mounts. Okay, what I might do is actually redesign this so the PTF tube just fits right in there. You don't need to have this metal insert because you don't want to eat away at the, the plastic and enlarge that hole. Um, so, yeah, I might redesign this so the PTF E tube would just go right here. You just stick right out of it, you know, and you can just pop it out when you need a new one. Instead of having to do this metal thing. Yeah, I forgot that I have to, I have to take the thing back off right here. I need to have it mounted first to the actual linear rail first before I put the thing back in there because the screws are behind there, I'll show you that. I guess this is a good time to show you how easy this is to take apart. Three screws and the whole thing just pops right like that. You can, you can deal with your jam. Yeah, it's going to make your life a lot easier if you use some like Loctite or glue. Um, to keep these M3 nuts in there. I mean, I guess I could make them a little undersized so they grab better. But then it'd be, you, have to, you have to pound them in. So, I, I don't know, either or. So, lock it in or maybe I can make the, the nut hole smaller. Right, there we go. Alright, here's a quick look at the duct. tight fit but it's not touching definitely I would definitely get a sock for sure this is not really a good the thermistors it was like a cheapo thermistor Amazon kind of weird out sticks out pretty far so not the best one not like the E3D1 doesn't stick out like that the official E3D1 well if you're wondering why it's curved like that so I have a curve like that so it will fit a CR touch or a BL touch Yeah, the BL touch doesn't actually have that. Uh, BL touch comes in the back, so you don't need to have that notch right there. So, it's going to splice that cable, and you can see obviously the different gauge and wire. This obviously requires a lot less current. So, I'll show you like in the final stage what you got to do with the current adjustment if you're running dynamic drivers. But you definitely want to lower your current down for these uh, this driver. It's tiny, so this thing will burn out really fast if you're sending too much current to it. All right, soldered and trig wrapped. All right, so I'm gonna get this motor on there and I'm gonna do a test heat up. Before I get the wires all dialed in, I wanna make sure this thing actually moves around because I, I don't even know if the motor works. I've had it for months and I haven't played with it. So, um, all right, you gotta make sure it's running the right direction too. Um, I'm running an older version of Marlin 2.0 because um, I'm actually gonna be going to Clipper with this machine. So, but I'll get more into that at the end of the video. All right, so um, cooling fan works. It's gonna get airflow. Um, I'm going to test everything, be able to touch everything, heat it up, and test the port cooling fan here, and uh, heat up the extruder so I can do like a test extrude, 
to see if the motor is actually spinning around and going in the right direction. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I got this on video or not, if it was recording or not, but this definitely works. Take a look. So one of the issues is when you don't have a really powerful motor, well obviously you need a gear reduction. It's a tiny motor. What you'll do is you'll get a lot of clicking noise. Um, I just want to push the filament through. Like the back pressure on the filament is just going to over, overwhelm the, the stepper. So, um, like I said, if you didn't see, like I, I don't know if I recorded the other video, but what you need to do is also is make sure that you uh, turn down your motor current. Do it under configuration, advanced settings, um, TMC drivers, driver current, extruder. So right now I'm at 200 um, for that tiny pancake, but when I had a NEMA 17, you know, pancake on there, I had a 550. So if you're if you're putting too much current to your motor, it's going to get extremely hot. And it's going to burn out the motor. So you definitely don't want to do that. So I'm at 200. Looking good. I'm going to lift some filament and see if I can get some filament through. I'm not bringing motor current to 300. Hi right, guys, so I brought the current up to 350 and I am definitely getting no more clicks but I also forgot that this is PLA plus and I uh, normally run this around 210 degrees and I have it at 180 degrees. So increasing the temperature would make this easier, it wouldn't give it so much back pressure. But I gotta check the temp though. It definitely is getting kind of warm. But a little bit, not too bad. So it's still to extruding, but I think it's going the wrong way, so I gotta go flip the flip the wire around. I think in, in the box um, because they're color matched up here, but it really depends on how it's done at the factory. So typically, I can just flip it in the box. I hope I don't have a JSD connector on there, but gotta deal with that fan noise anyway. It's driving me crazy. Um, and I also gotta put the belt on. That's giving me kind of a headache to, to latch it around. All right, there it is. Take a look. Alright, so I gotta do a test print, see how it works, see if I can get some uh, extrusion. I gotta go to Marlin, so because I had to go to Marlin anyways, instead of trying to rewire the stepper to, or the extruder to go backwards, um, I'm just gonna do it in Marlin, the, the software, the firmware. Plus, because I have to move the BL Touch too. So I can c continue to adjust the wires, that's the wire management. See, there's little, there's little tabs for. Um, uh, for uh, zip ties. So actually, I need to move that wire back. I can just move it back. I'm gonna, I'm, all I need to do is pull it back into the from the cable because it needs, it's going to be in the way of the adjuster mechanism. Only that one right there. So I kind of designed this to kind of be further back. There you go. No, it's out of the way. But then I need to bring this forward a little bit. So it's just a matter of once you pull the wires back inside the loom, it'll tighten those up and I'm not going to get so much slack. But it doesn't really hit the rail. It looks pretty close, but it's not It's not going to hit the rail. Plus it never really goes over here and hits anyways. So, I mean, the, the, the X is over the zero zero is on that corner. So, um, yeah, it never goes as far. Alright. I guess so. first print. Alright, so uh, not really an issue, but uh, I see this little a piece of electrical tape and that shim I put in the VL touch right there, or CR touch. Um, I gotta bring it down two millimeters lower. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do that. I could either design a shim to put in there, because a BL, this, I didn't have a problem with the VL touch. VL touch is longer, but you can adjust it. I'm not sure about the CR touch, but the VL touch, in the back of the VL touch, there's a set screw where you can lower the probe down. So you don't need really a shim if you have a BL touch. So I'm gonna take this off tomorrow and um, you know bring the probe down or or print out a shim either or doesn't really matter. But all right, we're not getting any clicking. It's, it's the motor's moving. First layer looking pretty good. Um, all right. So the cool thing about this this extruder system is uh, you know if I have a jam. Made that flashlight too much bright, I can't tell on the camera. 
but in case I get a, a jam, basically three screws, pull this thing forward, jam is out. You know, no headache trying to get the thing apart. Linear rail, this thing's not getting hot. So I keep an eye on the motors, check the current. It's pretty warm right now. Right now I have it at 350. So I might bring it down back down to 300. Yeah, because when you go too low, like I said, that's when you get the clicking part of it. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have current to move it. So, um, okay, cool. I mean, got lots of products going on here. You can see my workbench is a mess. Got to clean that up. I mean, that's just in a couple days. I had it all cleaned two days ago. Just working on projects. All right, so for 3D printing projects, um, I'm actually going to be converting this over to Clipper. So I'm going to play with Clipper. So I already got Clipper loaded on my 7-inch touchscreen here. Um, another thing, too, is a Clipper for that machine. Um, I'm running SKR 1.4, and I'd probably have to convert that over because it's, um, you know, I'd like to be able to control my, my fan here, my fan here, uh, via, via the um, software. So it's not running 24-7. It'll shut, the, the fans will shut off when it's not, or when it's not printing, the fans won't be on. Or it's going to shut off when the print's done. I'm also going to be converting a this to a Core XY. So I'm going to take this down, and I'm going to use my extra uh, old crypto mining, one of my old crypto mining rig frames. Um, you know, the 2020 rail. I'm going to reuse the 2020 rail. So this is going to become a Core XY running Clipper uh, with my hot end, with, with the Orca hot end on there. And uh, the printer bot, this is my original first printer. This is from 2014. It was really one of the, one of the first you know, metal commercial available kits uh, that was out there. It was called the PrinterBot Simple Metal. And before that, most of these printers were actually made out of wood, you know, plywood, laser cut plywood. Um, all right, so um, I'm going to be actually doing a clipper on this one too, possibly. So I have an SKR Pico coming in, and I already bought the, uh, you know, the Big, big, big Tree Tech uh, five-inch uh, Raspberry Pi screen. So I pull. I have Raspberry Pi four in this one. This one has a Raspberry Pi four, um, and then my offer up printer. I still got to work on this one too. Um, I bought this on offer up, forty bucks. If you didn't see the video, um, you know, it came with a BL Touch. Has an old board in there, an old uh, 8-bit board in there. So. Super noisy drivers, but uh, had a came with a direct drive Titan with the I don't know if it's a real E3D hot end in there, but there's it's a V6 hot end in there, so I might convert this over to like a Bontech style extruder, BMG extruder, or my own extruder because um, I got extra pancake motors. I got tons of stuff everywhere. So on this one, it's not gonna be like my primary print; it's just gonna be a backup because I don't want to spend the money on this one. I'd rather spend the money on this one with the linear rails on it. Um, so this is going to become a core XY with all full linear rails. And then what's funny is probably about 90% of my prints are done in this old original printer bot. Yeah, this thing is incredible. It's, I mean, I've up, it's running SKR 103 with the Trinamic 2208s in there, but I mean, this thing has been a workhorse for years and years and years. I mean, I run this thing all day, every day. Um, if I, for any, anything that's under 160 millimeters, I run on the printer bot. Just because it uses up so much less electricity and it's faster and it's you know less jerk you know there's less movement going on so yeah this is going to become a clipper machine with an SKR Pico so um, I guess I'm gonna have the five inch touch screen up here and um, yeah I'm getting sidetracked <laughs> this is an Orca extruder video <laughs> I don't know I've got products going on oh yeah by the way if you didn't see uh, <laughs> I got my uh, CNC lathe project over here that's done pretty much. And then my mill project, and then um, CNC mill. Yeah, that's pretty much done. I just got to start playing with it now. Mark, I'm so busy with fixing 3D printers and 3D printers, I haven't had a chance to play with that. And this is a customer's uh, Ron 2.4 that I'm actually upgrading. Um, the motherboard it has an Octopus motherboard. So that's almost done. I had to rewire the whole thing and rewrite custom firmware for it. All right, yeah, garage is a mess. I gotta clean up in here. All right, guys, cool. The Orca. All right, it's on my Thingiverse page down below if you want it.